Okay, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to yield three minutes to the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Roskam. The gentleman from Illinois is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the gentleman from Washington for yielding. You know, I was surprised, Mr. Speaker, that the Rules Committee uh, chose to reject an amendment that I offered that was an attempt to bring some clarity and light to this debate, particularly as it relates to energy needs. I represent a district, Mr. Speaker, in the Chicago area which the Chicago Tribune this week has um, reported has the highest gas prices in the nation. So in an attempt to try and take that on, I offered an amendment that I thought was a very straightforward thing, not meant to be controversial, not meant to be overly partisan, um, just a good common sense idea that unfortunately the Rules Committee, uh, the majority on the Rules Committee rejected. And that was a simple thing, and that, that would create a tax credit, Mr. Speaker, a tax credit for buy fuel vehicles. Right now we've got a tax credit for alternative fuel vehicles, and that's great. But you've got a lot of municipalities in my district that are really suffering under the weight of these high gas prices and they're looking for alternatives and a buy fuel vehicle is just one of those things so in other words oftentimes these vehicles can start up using gasoline and then it can be transferred and powered on compressed natural gas liquefied natural gas liquefied uh, propane or hydrogen all things that if municipalities are using will take pressure off of the gas prices. Now think about it. This is an opportunity for Congress to do something to help to create a market for other vehicles. Right now sometimes a private, private marketplace isn't able to come up as quickly as we want it. So we've got local units of government that are saying we want to use these types of vehicles and this rules committee, Mr. Speaker, has denied the tax credit would empower that kind of thing. It, it, makes no sense to me. And I'm just deeply disappointed that folks on the Rules Committee who are in the majority just, just rejected this idea. And it's not, it's, it's not a partisan idea. It's what is called a good idea that we need to move forward. You know, in 1968, Richard Nixon campaigned for the presidency claiming he had a secret plan to end the war. Went all over the country and said, I've got a secret plan to end the war. If you elect me President of the United States, my secret plan to end the war will, will, will win it all and will bring it all home. Well, we all know there was no secret plan. His Secretary of Defense uh, said so. Everyone's declared so, and history shows it. But there are eerie uh, similarities between that declaration of Richard Nixon in 1968 and the words of now Speaker Pelosi when she was the minority leader. She had a plan to bring gas prices down. Well, if what the majority is doing on the Rules Committee is rejecting common sense ideas like tax credits for buy fuel vehicles that help suburban communities in my district, I am very interested for when this secret plan that the Speaker has alluded to is going to be coming forward. I don't think there's a secret plan, Mr. Speaker. I think that the, that the Speaker in the last campaign... I yield the gentleman an additional one minute. Gentleman is recognized for additional one minute. I think the Speaker in the last campaign uh, was using the type of campaign rhetoric that is now, unfortunately, coming home to roost. I am deeply disappointed that the Rules Committee didn't see fit to let a common sense idea that helps the suburban municipalities that I re represent cope with outrageous gas prices. And I yield back the balance of my time and thank the gentleman for yielding.